Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will learn how to create a photo gallery. Without further ado, let's jump right into the action. All right, so here is the homepage of my public facing WordPress site. And if I use my navigation menu to navigate to my photo gallery page, we can see that currently this page only consists of a bit of dummy or filler content. So our goal for this lesson is to replace this with real photo gallery content. So if I want to make changes to this page, I can just look up here in the top bar and use this edit page button. All right, and then down within this main content field, let me get rid of this text. And instead I will say below is a collection of some of my favorite photographs. Then I will drop down to a new line. So here's my cursor. And now I want to create a photo gallery. So a grid of images. So maybe I want there to be four images per row. So one image here, one image here, one image here, and one image here. And then if the user clicks on any one of those four images, they can view the larger full resolution copy of the photograph. So if I want to create a photo gallery, my first step is to use this button right here that reads add media. And let's pay attention to this left hand side of this pop up screen. Currently we are viewing the insert media screen and our goal is to create a photo gallery. So we actually want to switch to this create gallery screen. So go ahead and click that. Okay, and now we just build up a collection of images that will make up our photo gallery. Currently, this media library link is selected. And this is basically WordPress asking me if I want to use any of my previously uploaded images in my photo gallery. In my case, these are the only two images that I've uploaded in the past and I don't want to use those in my photo gallery. So I'm going to need to upload new photographs from my hard drive to fill up this gallery. So to do that, I'm going to click on this upload files button. Then I will click on select files. And from here, it's up to you to find the photographs on your computer's hard drive that you want to use in your photo gallery. So in my case, I have a folder on my desktop named assets, and I'm going to use these eight images. You can click and drag to select multiple images to upload at once. Or if you're using Windows, you should be able to hold down either the control or shift key and then individually click on the different images you want. Or if you're using a Mac, you can use the command key or the Apple key and hold that down and then you can click on the individual images that you are interested in. Okay, now depending on the speed of your internet connection, and how many photos you uploaded and how large each file was, the uploading process might take a minute or two or maybe even five or 10 minutes. But once it's complete, you will see thumbnails for all of your images here. And basically any image that has a check mark next to it will be added to this new photo gallery that we are trying to create. So for example, all of the images we see right now except for these two are the images that I just right now uploaded and they all have check marks. But if for some reason I did want to use one of these two images that I uploaded on a previous day, I could just click on them. So now they have the check marks, uh, but obviously I don't actually want to use them. So then I can just click on them again to remove the check marks. All right. So once you've selected all of the images that you want to use in your gallery and they have check marks on them, go ahead and click this blue create a new gallery button. From this screen, you are free to drag and drop to reorder your gallery. So maybe I want this elephant photograph to come first, and then I want the cat wearing glasses to come second. You get the idea. Also, you are free to add captions for each photo here. So I could click here and say elephant with baby elephant. Maybe I don't need a caption for this cat photograph, but maybe for this cupcake photo, I want to say cupcakes. You get the idea. Now I do want to bring your attention to this right hand column. So the first option we see here is link to, and this is what controls what will happen when a visitor of our website clicks on one of these thumbnail images. 
So if I click this, I'm going to select media file. So that way when a visitor clicks on one of the thumbnails, it will take them directly to the full large resolution original copy of the photograph. The next option is columns. You are free to choose however many photos you want to be per row. I think it would look good if there were four photographs per row, so I choose four. I'm not sure why you would want to randomize the order, uh, but you're free to check that if you want to. I will leave it unchecked so that the order that I created will stay intact. And then the last option, size, controls the size of the image before the user clicks on one of the images. You're free to change this and experiment with it, but I would say that nine times out of 10, thumbnail is probably the best bet. Okay, I'm happy with those options, so I will click this bottom right insert gallery button. Here we can see our new photo gallery, and why don't we go ahead and update this page using this blue update button, and then see what it looks like on the public front end of our website. So up here we see page successfully created, and I can use this link to jump to my public website. Let me scroll down a bit. Looks good. And if I click on the elephant thumbnail, it takes me to the original large resolution, very high quality copy of the photograph. And then I can just use my web browser's back arrow button to go back a page. Okay, and practice makes perfect, so why don't we try to create another photo gallery? I wanna point out that we can include multiple galleries on the same page. So I want to edit this photo gallery page again, so up in my top bar I will use this edit page link. So down here within our main content field, I will click to the right of the gallery to place my cursor there, and then I will use my enter or return key to drop down to a new line. And why don't we create a bit of text that reads scenic photos. And maybe instead of standard paragraph text, I want this to look like a headline. So I just select this text and then up here from this menu, I will choose heading level two. And then right below that headline, I will just push enter to drop down to a new line. And now why don't I add another photo gallery? So my cursor is where I want it. We can see it blinking. And now I'm just going to use this add media button. I will click create gallery over here in the left hand column. And I could create a new gallery by reusing some of these images that I've already uploaded but I want to upload a few new images, so click Upload Files here, and then Select Files. I have a folder on my computer named Scenic, and it contains these four photographs that I want to use. Okay, looks good. We can see that the four new images I just uploaded are the only four with the check mark on them. Perfect, those are the only four that I want in my new image gallery. So I will just click create new gallery down here. Maybe I want this mountain to be the first photo so I can just drag and drop. Over on this right hand column, I'll change this to media file and I want four per row so I will change columns to four, a four column grid. And now I can just click insert gallery and there we have it. Now, before I save this page, I do want to point out that it's not like you can only add photo galleries to a page that has a title of photo gallery. You can add a photo gallery to any page and any post. Okay, so feel free to use this technique wherever you see fit on your website. Having said that, I will click the blue update button. Okay, here we see page successfully updated. I will use this link to preview things. Let me scroll down a bit. Perfect, so here's our first photo gallery, here's our new headline, and here's the second photo gallery. And if I click on one of these thumbnails, so let me click on this one, it takes me to the original full resolution copy of the photograph. Now you'll notice that I need to use my web browser's back button to navigate back to the website if I wanna click on a different photograph. So again, I would have to click the back button and maybe I want to view this fourth photograph. Cool, and then I would have to click the back button again. So we can see that that is not ideal. 
In a perfect world, our visitors would not have to keep clicking the back button on their browser. In a perfect world, maybe when a visitor clicks one of these thumbnails, it would open a larger copy of the image that maybe takes up this portion of the screen. And then the outer edges of the screen would maybe be a slightly transparent black background. And maybe there would be a small X button right about here. You get the idea. And the user could maybe click forward and back arrows to switch between different photographs. That kind of a layout and behavior is often referred to as a light box or a modal. Or sometimes it's even referred to as a pop-up photo gallery or a pop-up slideshow or pop-up carousel. But most of the time we will hear that referred to as either a light box or a modal. Anyways, long story short, the point that I'm trying to make is that that behavior would be much better than what we currently have. Because visitors of our website should not have to use the back button in their browser to switch between the different full resolution copies of the photos. It's just not a user-friendly experience. So in our next lesson, we will learn how to customize WordPress to use a light box or a modal or a pop-up type of one of our thumbnails. To pique your interest maybe a little bit more, uh, in other words, our next lesson will be our first exposure to something called a plugin. So in our next lesson, we will answer the question, what in the world is a plugin? And we will leverage the power of plugins to create the exact photo gallery experience that we want. It should be a lot of fun. Let's keep things rolling and I will see you in the next lesson. Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will answer the question, what is a plugin? A plugin lets us add new functionality or new features to our WordPress website. Or in other words, when we want WordPress to be able to do something that it can't do out of the box, we can install a plugin to make the impossible possible. Here's a quick metaphor. So think of your kitchen as your WordPress website. And when you first moved into your house, imagine that your kitchen did not have a dishwasher machine. And so you had to wash all of your dishes by hand. So that means in order to add the feature of automatic dishwashing to your kitchen, you need to install a dishwashing machine. So think of the dishwashing machine as a plug-in. You add it into your kitchen. You install it within your kitchen to add the new functionality and new features of automatic dishwashing. The same is true with WordPress. When we want WordPress to be able to do something new that it previously could not do, we just install a plugin. There are thousands of plugins to choose from that can add all sorts of new features. For example, in this lesson, why don't we use plugins to improve our photo galleries? So if I use my main navigation to navigate to the photo gallery page, and then if I click on one of these thumbnail images, so maybe if I click on the elephant image, it opens the high resolution photo in a new page. And then visitors of our website have to use the back button on their web browser to switch back to the photo gallery. And you'll remember in our previous lesson, we discussed why that's less than ideal. And we reviewed how it would be better if instead when we clicked on one of the thumbnails, it opened up a larger copy right here and the rest of the screen turned transparent black. And maybe there were also arrows to switch back and forth to the previous and next photos. In the web design industry, we commonly refer to a pop-up photograph like that as a light box. Now by default, WordPress does not support light box functionality, but we can leverage the power of plugins to add that light box pop-up functionality or feature to our website. So check this out. Let's begin by switching over to the admin dashboard of our website. I can use this link in my top bar to navigate to my admin area. Remember, you can always get to your admin area by adding slash WP admin to the end of the root of your website URL. And if you're not already logged in, WordPress will just ask for your username and password. Okay, so from our dashboard, let's look in the left-hand sidebar about a little more than halfway down for the item named plugins. All right, now your plugin screen might not look exactly like mine. Depending on which web host you're using, you may or may not have this top area that you see here. 
It's entirely possible that your plugin screen only contains the part that I'm highlighting right now. And that's A-OK. -okay. That's actually what I would prefer. So if your plugin screen looks like mine and you do have this top area, for the time being, I recommend we use this top right X icon to close out of it. Basically what's going on is some web hosts pre-install a plugin named Jetpack. And this is just the Jetpack specific menu options up here. So for the time being, I'm going to close out of that. We don't need to look at it. We can always bring it up again later. Okay, and now everyone's plugin screen should look very similar. So here we see a list of all of the plugins that are currently installed. Again, different web hosts will pre-install different plugins. For the time being, none of these plugins matter. Okay, we can review those at a later date. For now, let's try something fun. Let's try to add a new plugin to our WordPress that will add the Lightbox pop-up behavior to our photo galleries. So what we want to do is add a new plugin. So you can either click the Add New button right here towards the top, or you can click Add New under the Plugins menu in the sidebar. All right, now this screen lets us choose from thousands of free plugins. Now nine times out of 10, you're probably just gonna wanna jump right to this top right search bar area because you're probably looking for a specific plugin to solve a specific issue. So in my case, I will use this top right search bar and I will search for Lightbox. Okay, so we can see that that brings up all sorts of Lightbox related results. Now sometimes the results can be overwhelming. All of these plugins claim to do basically the same thing, right? They all promise to create a pop-up light box when you click on an image, right? And the pop-up will show you a larger, higher resolution copy of the photograph. So you might be wondering, how in the world are you supposed to choose one of these plugins when there's so many of them and they all seem so similar? Well, that's a really good question. And there's not really a scientific or correct answer, but I can tell you what I usually do. So let's take this first plugin as an example. Notice here, it tells us how many active installs it has. So for this plugin, this means that over 50,000 people, or I guess I should say 50,000 different WordPress websites are currently using this plugin. So I would always choose a plugin that has a lot of active installs. Odds are, if a lot of other people are relying on a plugin, it's probably a quality solution. So for example, this plugin, you can see that it only has about 1,000 active installs. Now I'm not saying that this is a bad plugin. For all I know, it's the best Lightbox plugin in the universe. <laughs> but it's up to you to sort of test out and try the different plugins. There's no scientific way to select a plugin here. You kind of just have to do your own research. Also, word of mouth is a huge factor when it comes to plugins. As the weeks and months and years go by of you using WordPress, you will hear your peers and other WordPress users talk about certain plugins. You'll hear the same plugin names get recommended again and again and again. So as a real life example of word of mouth, I can tell you that one of the top Lightbox plugins uh, is called Responsive Lightbox. So I just search for Responsive Lightbox. And it's this one. It's named Responsive Lightbox by D Factory. Now I'm not saying that any of the other Lightbox plugins are bad. All I'm saying is that I've had very good experiences with this plugin in the past. And we can see that it has over 200,000 active installs. Uh, so I'm not alone in enjoying this plugin. So you're free to use whatever plugin you like, uh, but for the purposes of this course, why don't you search for and use this same plugin as me Responsive Lightbox by D Factory. And then you can just click this Install Now button. It should just take a few seconds to install and once it completes, then the button will turn into an Activate button. So go ahead and click the blue Activate. That takes me back to my main plugin screen and here we can see a message that reads Plugin Activated. Okay, so let's take it for a test drive. So if I use this link in my top bar to switch back to my public facing website and use my navigation to jump to my photo gallery page. Now, if I click on the elephant thumbnail here, here we can see the large resolution copy of the photo, 
Only now, I have this X in the top right corner. So if I click that, it takes me right back to the photo gallery. So if I go back into the large version, I can also push the escape key on my keyboard to go back to the gallery. And you'll also notice these arrows down at the bottom portion of the screen. So I can click on this forward facing arrow to go to the next full resolution photo. You get the idea. You can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard. Pretty cool. So now users don't have to use the back button in their web browser. Instead, they're presented with a nice light box pop-up experience. And this particular plugin that we used is very flexible. So we're free to customize it a bit. So if we use this link in my bar to jump back to my admin dashboard, and then in the sidebar look for plugins again, Within this list of all of our installed plugins, we see Responsive Lightbox down here. And if we click on this Settings link under Responsive Lightbox, this first option here lets us customize the particular Lightbox styling that gets used. So the current Lightbox behavior that's getting used is called Swipe Box. But if we switch it to Fancy Box, so I check that option, and then if I scroll down to the very bottom and click Save Changes, we see this message, Settings Saved, perfect. Let's close that message and also let's close this message that says, Thank you for installing Responsive Lightbox. So you can just use this X over on the right hand side to close that. All right, and now that we switched from Swipe Box to Fancy Box, let's go look at our public facing website and see how that looks. So jump over to the photo gallery page and click on the elephants. And immediately we can see this is a different experience. So now the entire screen isn't blacked out, just the left and right edges are sort of a transparent gray. And if I hover over the image, we can see this right facing arrow right here. That lets me switch through the images. If I hover over the left hand side of the image, we have an arrow to go back this direction, you get the idea. And we can use the X right here to close the light box. Okay, so it's up to you to choose which specific light box option you want to use. But the important point here is that we just leveraged the power of plugins to create the exact photo gallery experience that we wanted. Now that will bring this lesson to a close, but I do want to let you know that there are plugins for basically anything and everything you can think of. 99 times out of 100, if you think of a feature in your mind for your website, someone has already created a WordPress plugin for it, and odds are they've added it to that free list of plugins that we can search from. Now just to whet your appetite a bit, I'll let you know that towards the end of this course, when we work on the Contact Us page, we will leverage several new plugins to create a highly interactive contact page. So don't worry, this is not the last time that we will talk about plugins in this course. In fact, even aside from the Contact Us lessons, there are a few other moments where we will install and leverage additional plugins. Now changing gears a bit, in our next lesson, we're gonna jump back to blog posts. We're going to address one of the simplest but most powerful aspects of WordPress. I'm referring to categories. Categories will open so many new doors for us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's keep things rolling, and I will see you in the next lesson.